Carlisle, if... Uh, so we're I live right now. So we're live right now with uh, Dr. M3. Sorry to interrupt. Go ahead, Dr. M3. No, I was going to say, I was going to tweet out to some of my folks, too, but go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. please do so. All right, so... First of all, like I said, we have Dr. M3 here, and for those of you that are living under a rock, I mean, this, this is one of the most amazing uh, people on YouTube right now that has an awesome channel. I'm sure you guys are me talking about it, and um, he actually bumped into Shmi150, which is also an awesome guy that's on YouTube, and I bumped into him in Italy. He's, Shmi150 is everywhere. So yeah, he is awesome. everywhere. <laughs> Doesn't he have something where he says like "Where's Shmi" or something like that? Oh yeah, I, actually, I used to. I used to if, uh, so we're live right now. So we're live right now with uh, Doctor. Okay, we got to mute uh, YouTube Go ahead, someone. Yeah, no, no, I was, no, gonna no, say, I was going, going to say that. Too, that um, folks too, but go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, please do so. All right. So first of all, like I said, we have Doctor M3 here, and just bear with us a moment, uh, folks. Andrew someone has YouTube in this so we're live right now. So we're live right now with uh, Dr. M3. Sorry to interrupt. Sorry. Go ahead, Dr. Carl, uh, did I lose you? No, I'm still here. Oh, okay. Someone. Well, minute, we had, uh, I was getting this feedback. I was trying to figure out where it was coming from. Uh, no, yeah, I mean, I was. I used to jokingly say, where on earth is, you know, is Shmi kind of like, where on, uh, where on the world is Carmen Sandiego or... Um, uh, we're in the universe is Carmen San Diego. Shmi happens to always be at the right place at the right time, and um, I love him because he brings us the most amazing content. And I think this uh, there's a, a probably really a a small group of folks that sort of you know go the extra mile to bring really the ultimate in uh, these um, uh, exotic experience. And there are lots and lots of people, obviously that you know, uh, share their experiences, whether it's drive-bys or spottings and so on. And that's what I love about our YouTube community is our, you know, our desire, willingness to, to kind of share our experiences. So that's, it's always fun. Hey, careful what, you, what you're talking about, drive-bys there. Some people might misinterpret that. <laughs> <laughs> it should be more like flybys, not drive-bys. <laughs> Especially with, uh, with uh, well... I don't want to say anything bad about uh, Chicago, Rico. <laughs> yeah, hey, hey, be careful, guys. Don't go too, uh, don't go off topic here, you know? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, can you guys see my, my uh, desktop? I, I, now I can see your desktop, yeah. Okay, I think yeah. it, it works just like, I guess whenever I'm talking, you'll see the desktop. <laughs> okay. So, this is Dr. M3's YouTube channel, which is pretty awesome. First of all, congratulations on 31,000 subscribers. That's that's pretty awesome. Great, thank you. I think we're about to hit 32 uh, any minute now, probably the next day or so. Nice. So, supercars personify. I keep saying, I'm bumbling that. What is what is that all about for people that don't know? Well, I, I mean, you know, in, in fact, I was just thinking about this. My very first uh, YouTube video was posted back, I think, in August of 2006. And at the time, I had a uh, BMW M6, the V10 version. I was looking at a new exhaust, the Eisenman raced exhaust, and I went out to California to check out a buddy of mine's car who actually just put it on. And that was, I think, maybe like a 10-second clip. Of Five seconds. Accelerating away, yes, in that white uh, M5, M6 coupe. <laughs> and that was go. my very first YouTube video, and I just wanted to share it with another buddy of mine who was helping me decide on that exhaust. And, you know, just over the years, I, you know, I've always been a car lover. My dad got me interested from when, from when I was very young, and I thought, you know, wow, what's a great forum to kind of share experiences just about the car uh, community in, in general. And then, you know, I picked up my first... Um, uh, Lamborghini it was a 2008 Supermajera, and that started the process of, you know, before I got this car, I, I didn't really know an awful lot about the supercars community, at least experiencing it. And so I thought, what a great way to kind of share the experience with, you know, folks who perhaps uh, may not have, you know, easy access to cars like this, kind of see what it's like. And so that's kind of how it started. And it really is designed to kind of give you a good range of uh, uh, feel, feeling for the experiences 
whether it's whether it's the reaction videos, which I think are absolutely yeah. hysterical, <laughs> or um, you know the you know, rallies that we go on, or just general general things about supercars, and frankly, not just supercars, because you'll see on the channel there's it's a if you love cars, doesn't matter what genre or, where, or era they're from, you'll you'll find me. Uh, perhaps uh, talking about it somehow. It's just a love of cars, and that's what the channel really embodies. It's not about me, by the way, uh, also. I mean, you know, I, I keep, people ask me, you know, well, who is Dr. M3, and what is he doing? <laughs> it, it really isn't about me, per se. My goal here is to demonstrate to folks that anybody can be Dr. M3. If you work hard, you know, never take failure for an answer, never be unwilling, never be fearful of failing because it is out of failure that comes true success. And so that's really always been my message and my goal. It's not about what I do, but it's what about you do and what you want to do to make success a reality. And I, I think um, w one of the things that really stands out about your channel and you in particular is is just the, the way that you interact with the community. Now we've all seen you know other guys that start their channel and they get really big and then it's kind of like, you feel like, you know, oh, they're too big for the little guy. You know what I mean? Like, you don't care who anybody is. It's like, if they, if they share the same, you know, passion for, for automobiles as you do, then it's like instant friendship type of thing. I mean, I, I, and I, I can totally verify this because I see you all over YouTube, like, all the coolest videos. Dr. M3 is in there somewhere, like, <laughs> cool video, whatever. And that's just so awesome, man. Yeah. You know, I wish I wish more people were like that because it's just I don't know. It it I think some people get a little bit too competitive and people want to be in their own little worlds, and I don't think that's what it's all about. It's it's about community. It's about sharing our passions and 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 togetherness. You know what I mean? It's, I hate to sound cliche or whatever, but it's true. Yeah. No. Absolutely. I mean, and I and I think I walk the walk, and I think there are a lot of people that are like that. And again, you know, when I I met up with uh, Shmi 150 at Geneva. I met up with Marco Marchettino there as well, and I think the best part for me is when I run into fans, uh, people who are from all different walks of life that come up to me and say, "Are you Doctor M3?" And he <laughs> sent me, sent me a, 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 a an email just last night. Even they saw me at Geneva and they didn't come up to say hi. And I'm like, "Why? Why didn't you?" Because I I like interacting, and it's true, whether any car show I go to, or in general, I'm a kind of a people person. But yeah, don't feel afraid to approach me. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a very approachable guy, laid back, and those are the folks. I think the key YouTubers now are, are just like that. I mean, Tim is a very approachable guy, very normal guy. And uh, I think that's just the awesome thing. So are you. I mean, you have a lot of experience. Your your channel, by the way, deserves way more subscribers than it it, it has. And it you know it just takes time for these things. But I think you have such great insight, and I, I really like the work that you do as well. Thank you, man. I, I um, I'm humbled by that uh, compliment. So want to get right into the Geneva show. So I don't know if I I'm hoping you can see my desktop still. So you're seeing an ad. <laughs> Here's your video, uh, Pagani Zonda. So um, I would like to first of all start. You know, you guys know that. First of all, again, you can see this my desktop, right? Yep, I can. We can see it. Okay, perfect. Um, so. I have to say, I mean, you guys should know by now about watching the channel that I'm really into extreme. That's why I love Lamborghinis. And I got to say, man, this car looks really wild with all the carbon fiber and all the craziness. I know some of it's a little bit much. You know, so was the Sesto Elemento, but I still like that, that, that you know, extreme look of it. Now, what is your, what was it, what, how did you feel seeing this car for the fir this first time you saw it at the show, right? Yeah, this is the first time I've seen the Revolution at the show. And, you know, people, people, this is a polarizing car. Lots of, everybody loves the Zonda, loved the, the Zonda, and people are mixed, have mixed feeling about the car that replaced it, which is the Wyra. I love the Wyra. It is now my latest obsession. Uh, notwithstanding my love for Lamborghini, I love that car, the new Wyra. But the Revolution is really the ultimate 
of the Zonda line. This is the last, actually. They are going to be making five of these, and this is the last. This is number five of five that you saw at the show. The car is absolutely extreme. First of all, you know, carbon fiber all around. Um, those huge canards up front for downforce. The absolute lightweight nature of the car. The entire car, the body of the car is carbon fiber. Car weighs in, fully loaded, at something like 2,500 pounds and producing 800 horsepower. Wow, just insane. Um, and its look is just, it's alien. And to me, this was one of the top maybe three or four cars at Geneva this year. Even though we've kind of seen this before, we saw a version of it last year. Um, but uh, there are some tweaks to this one, and it, it is a pretty impressive car. Rico, what did you, you saw the video and you saw the pictures of uh, the uh, um, uh, Pagani Zonda Revolution. What, what do you think? No, I, I I definitely agree. I mean, and, and and you went over all the details. It's it's definitely a breathtaking car. I mean, you look at that car and it's intimidating. Um, I I just don't really understand what they're only making five of them. I think it's a it's a beautiful car, and if you put it on the market, people will buy it. Yeah. I, I will, at least people who can afford it. It's three three over three million dollars. It's it's a it's a heavy price, but you know you have people who are buying a Bugatti for almost as much. So if you if you're buying over two million dollars for a car, I'm pretty sure you have an extra million for a you know for a Pagani Revolution. So that's that's just my thinking of it. I, I think if they will make more cars of it and they put it on the market, they maybe probably they can make it, you know road legal. Um, you know if if Pagani really thinks about it, I think that you know he will get Lamborghini and and Ferrari in trouble because the cars. I think the design of the car is just beautiful. I think it's a beautiful car. I, I really see it as a piece of art, um, you know. So that's that's just what I think about Pagani. But definitely, man, it's it's a beautiful car. You know, you went over all the details. The carbon fiber looks amazing on it. Um, you know, the engine. I think it's a V12. You were uh, they, they were yep. looking at the details. V12, 800 horsepower, and then the weight. I mean, it's 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 a it's a rocket, man. It's basically just you just sitting on top of the engine because basically the car doesn't weight anything. Yep, exactly you know? right. Exactly yes, right. I, I I really really love the car. I mean, out of all the videos that I've seen, obviously I wasn't at the show, but um, and that's one of my questions, Carlo. Like, well, I don't know if you guys can do that uh, next time. Instead of doing Geneva overseas, you guys can do Geneva, Illinois. It's about forty-five <laughs> minutes away from Chicago, so <laughs> it's still Geneva, still Geneva. So. Instead of going overseas, we can do it in the in the U.S. I ha I but um, you know, I wasn't at the I wasn't at the show, but definitely I, I think out of all the videos, you know, the Pagani Sonda Revolution, I think I think that's that was probably the best looking car I've seen so far. Um, you know, and I don't want to go off topic, but I, I also the other one, the uh, I can't even pronounce it, Kanisek or Kaniznek, yeah. whatever yeah, it is, the, the one. We yeah. know what you're talking about. <laughs> Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, I can I can pronounce that car. You know, I can pronounce all the Spanish names, the Huracan and Aventador. I can I can pronounce those no problem. But the other one, man, you guys gotta get help me out on that one. So yeah, the Pagani man. Out of all the videos, that's that's the one I like. I mean, I've been looking at the pictures. I've been looking at the specs of the car. It looks amazing, and it, it looks a monster. That that thing is a monster for sure. Well, I have an interesting question for you guys. Um, so some of the car I think might be just a little bit over the top, like a little bit too much. So looking at the front of it, like you see all, all this stuff on the sides. But here's the here's the question, though. You have to remember, even though we as car enthusiasts treat this as a, as a work of art, it's a car. Yeah. It's designed to do a certain function. So there's that line between, you know, design is in terms of aesthetic, you know, how does a car look versus its performance, how aerodynamic it is, how much uh, downforce it has. So, you know, a lot of times I hear people talking about cars and they seem to be talking a lot of the, the aesthetics, you know, oh, that, that wing is too big. But that wing is maybe the thing that keeps that car badass in the corners, you know what I mean? So it, how do you separate between when you're looking at a car visually versus the, the performance of the car? Because maybe... The thing that's going to make this car really awesome on the track and on the road, it might not really look that good to the eyes. You know, it'll it'll feel good in the, when you're you're behind the steering wheel, but uh, maybe to the eyes, like I, I think there was a Jaguar. It has a huge wing on it, and people are like, "Oh, that wing is too big." 
but it's not there for your eyes. You yeah. know what I mean? So how yeah. do you separate between that, between design and you know function and, and form? You know? Well, I, I think I think I actually ascribe to what Lamborghini's motto has been for the last few cars. First of all, Lamborghini has never been shy of being, you know, controversial and edgy and uh, and on the cutting edge. And in fact, if you look at the Aventador, when you first saw the pictures, it was a very polarizing car. But when you see it in person, it's completely different. And I think you have to make sure that you separate the two. You sometimes you have to see the form in 3D to have an appreciation for it. That's number one. Number two, their motto is form follows function. So, you know, instead of putting a nice big wing on the car and saying, yes, we've got a big wing and it looks pretty, you know, they also need to make, they also need to make sure that it actually does or performs a function. Because otherwise, um, you know, that beautiful car may put you into a wall, right? And so it depends on the purpose. On the other hand, the truth of the matter is, just like in real estate, it's curb appeal. When I am walking towards a car, there's an emotional response that I get to it. And I am sorry, no matter how amazing the car performs, if you are walk, if it's unattractive, then it really takes away something from that car. And you know, it, it, to use another example, another car that I saw and spent a lot of time with, including in the UK, is um, is the the the, uh, the McLaren P1. There's right, a car yeah. that could it look? I mean, I think the car is beautiful in person, and if you look at everything on the car, all this, the extra skeleton and the holes and stuff like that, it is for a purpose. And in fact, nature tends to scallop things in a certain way to perform a certain way, and engineers are only now starting to exploit it to its fullest and realize that it can aesthetically be very beautiful. So I don't think they're mutually exclusive at all. I think they go hand in hand. They can go hand in hand. You just need to have a designer that exploit those features and sort of bring out the inner beauty in the, in, the, in the forms. Yeah, I think there's a there's a particular talent in, you know, knowing, you know, scientifically that, you know, this is the shape that we need, but I can make this shape actually work for me visually as well as technically if I do this, you know, with certain colors or what if we do, you know what I mean? So it's a balancing act, I think, that they play. And actually, it would be nice to perhaps uh, one day do an interview with some of these people that, you know, tackle these kinds of questions in terms of the design process, you know, how do you actually produce, you know, a, a Lamborghini Aventador, you know, how, how, how does that come, come to place, you know, the combination between people that are concerned about how the car is going to look to the customer versus the other people that are battling out and saying, no, man, we can't do that, I know that looks cool, but that's going to make the car too heavy, and it, you know what I mean, so it, it, it'd be interesting to see how that whole dynamic works, but I want to keep things moving because there's a lot of cars at the show, obviously we can't cover all the cars, but, um, I'm I'm looking here at this uh, this video Shmi had of the Nimrod <laughs> K K <Kedusha>? <laughs> <laughs> There you go. Oh boy. What do you think? <laughs> well, I have to tell you this. <clears throat> I wa I didn't spend an awful lot of time at that stand. In fact, I kind of walked by uh, because, to be honest, first of all, they need a marketing person. Because Nimrod comes with a certain connotation, certainly in the English language. <laughs> and I would hate to be saying I'm bragging to my friends, yeah, you know, my Nimrod is just so amazing. That Nimrod performance. And Nimrod? Re what? Did you um, <laughs> so um, I think they need a name change, notwithstanding, though. I mean, they're, they're clearly... Uh, they're clearly pushing the edge and doing some interesting things, but um, boy, it's hard to get beyond the, the, the name, which is what you're confronted with. And I, so I don't know. Rico, did you see that, did you see that video from Shmi? The one with the, uh, with the iPhone? No, no, no. That was, that was still on the Koenigsegg adjusting the height and, and uh, arrow on the car. That's still a right. 
But this, uh, Carlisle, I don't think you, you want to pull that um, video up because I think you still have the. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. If, oh, it's yeah, actually. If I've seen it. Um, it's actually on the screen right now. Nope. No, it's not. We're still seeing the Revolution. Or maybe you. Okay, maybe I, I mixed up my windows here. Yeah, I think that's what happened. I apologize. Uh, just bear with me one moment here. Let's bring this over to that window. In the meantime, um, Rico, so you haven't seen that video? It's like, what is what is that? It's based on the 458, right? Yeah, it's based on the 458. It looks, I don't know, hammerheaded. I don't know. I don't even know what to. Honestly, I don't. I, I don't know. I don't know what to say about that car. Um, yeah. Uh, other than, are you talking, are you other talking than, that 450? Are, are you talking about the 458 with the body just kit? Just bear with me body? one moment here. Yeah. What's that? Are, are you talking about the 458 with the uh, with the white body kit? Like the uh, it was like white yeah. and red. Yeah, Carlisle, did that come up? Because I don't I still don't see that. Yeah, I'm trying to get it up right now. That didn't sound right, but anyway. Right after we spoke yeah. about Nimrod. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, come on now. I'm trying to get the Nimrod. Oh, oh actually, I am. I'm trying to get the Nimrod up. Wow. Oh yeah, this, this is yeah, after that... all, Carlisle. This is a family show. I know. <laughs> you can see it oh. now, right? So Rico. Here yeah, yeah, yeah. Still... <laughs> oh yeah, I've seen this car, and actually, I come. I I put a comment. I don't know, man. I think I, I don't like it. I, I don't know what these companies are doing, tuning up the cars. Um, I, I think if they leave the body alone from the Ferrari 458, will be fine. I think that was that's a beautiful car alone on its own. Um, you know, if you tweak the engine a little bit, I'm pretty sure you can get more horsepower. I'm pretty sure you can improve the suspension and the uh, and the braking system. But once they go with the body kit, um, first of all, that's one ugly body kit. Yeah. My personal opinion. Personal opinion. Yeah. Um, I, I think it's it's very it's not appealing for me, and and definitely is not something that I would like you know to purchase. But I I think if they would just you know tune up the engine, leave the car alone, maybe change the wheels, make them high performance, um, you know they will have a better shot. And maybe choosing different colors, that white and red, I don't think it goes with the car. Yeah. Um, so I, I think that's just my opinion on the car. I mean I don't know too much about the brand. Um, I don't know exactly what the horsepower or you know how they improve the car because definitely the looks they they, they <laughs> ruin the car with the looks. So maybe they did something magical with the engine that will make you forget that the car looks ugly. Well, well but, Rico, you know that, we, that's what I can say. This is what we were talking about, right? It's a curb appeal. You're walking to that right. car, no matter what they do to it. As you walk to that car, you you're just looking at it, going, "Oh my God!" You know, it just it, it doesn't give. It doesn't give you. A, they were going for a bit of a, almost um, a, an FF. You know the Enzo, the FF FXX look to it on. Yeah. The, when you look at it from side profile, but I think they ruined a perfectly good car. And again, that's my opinion. Other people may look at this and like it, but um, I just it, this just doesn't work for me at all. I just <laughs> don't know what they were thinking. Well, you know what I see when I look at this car. I see, I see a lot of things in this car. Like it's, it's, it's a kind of a combination of a lot of things. Like I see, I see an Enzo in the yeah. front. You see right over the right. wheel, uh, the nose as well, right in the center. Yeah. I see a uh, Ferrari 430 uh, in the back. Yeah. <laughs> right. And then somewhere in there, there's also obviously a 458, which is based on. But as well in the back, I see Tron. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know why, but I see Tron. Uh, you know what I, don't know what were, I don't know what look. they were thinking, but uh, <laughs> they were they were maybe they were thinking. Uh, well, you, it's a little crazy. But you know what? Four hundred and twenty-eight people disagree with both of us, so we'll move on to the next. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what I was looking at. Four hundred and fifty-eight people like the car. I'm pretty sure what? they like Shmi. That's the only why. That's the only reason why they like the video. Yeah, I was gonna say that you have to be careful because some of those likes are probably. Encouraging and saying, "Great, Shmi, thank you for bringing to, uh, this to us." Right. Not a, not a, you know, an endorsement of the content. These are the likes right here. See, see what's on my screen? There it is. Yep. <laughs> hey, Shmi, if you're watching, hope everything's good and uh, get some rest, man. You've been uh, w working really hard. Yeah, he has been. 
All right, so next video. What do we have coming up next? Box of chocolates. The uh, oh, I'm not talk even about, gonna pronounce yeah, that. Talk about the, what the, McLe the, the McLaren. Oh, well, you're gonna talk about that one. But what about the McLaren, the 650R? Yeah, that baby was amazing. Yeah, that car is amazing looking, man. I saw that car; it looks phenomenal. Yeah. So, <clears throat> um, Carla, are you gonna? Are you? Do you want us to talk about one one first, and then we'll get to the 650? Yeah, yeah, let's talk about the one first. Okay, since you have it up. Okay. So I so I got I spent a fair amount of time with this car actually. And Shmi and I were there together. Tim and I were there together. Uh, I got to sit in it, I got a video, I'm gonna probably load it probably tomorrow from inside behind the wheel. This thing is unbelievable. First road going car, um, you know, with a one kilogram, one horsepower to one kilogram ratio. And if you saw Rob Raffetti's um, video oh, yeah. on the amazing stability of the Ajera R, where that thing is literally crab walk walking down a runway where most other cars would have you know, sent you off into the ditch someplace, you realize how amazing this car is going to be. The car, by the way, using its D GPS, and I'm going to show in my video, it has a its telemetry communication system on the roof, where using GPS, it knows where it is. So if you're on a track, if you're on the Nürburgring, if you're on Laguna Seca, wherever you are, it knows the track, and it will adjust its height, um, its ride, its suspension, based on not only the location in terms of the track, but also the location on the track. It knows certain spots, and it can adjust the suspension accordingly. I mean, this car is just beyond, beyond. It's, you know, forget about the brute horsepower, which is what I love about Koenigsegg, but all the technology that goes into these things, and it is just, I've never driven one. I, I'm supposed to actually drive it this summer. I was supposed to drive it last summer. Not the one, not the, the one one, but the Ajera R, and I still intend on driving it, hopefully by the end of the summer. Then, of course, I'll bring that to you guys, but the nice. car is just insane. Um, is this the video with Rob where he's uh, doing, where he's doing yep. the crab walk? Yes. Yep. So let me shut up, and hopefully this comes up so you can see what it looks like. I thought there were better shots of the exterior with it swerving. What? Oh, no, there is. Towards the end, if you go towards the end, um, it's there. Here it is. That's it. Oh, man. That's crazy. That's insane. You try that with a Bugatti, a Lamborghini, a Ferrari, you know, I am telling you, that thing is going off into, you know, either a, a retaining wall or into a ditch someplace. So why do you wow. think that they're able to do this? What, what's so special about this car? That, you know, this is what you have with small manufacturers. They are dedicated. It's about engineering. First of all, to do that, that car is perfectly balanced, Right. And the car also uses complex geometry and sensors to kind of know where it is and correct. I mean, that stability beyond anything else, I've never seen that kind of stability in any car. I mean, you just look at that thing. It looks like it's crab walking. That's insane. That and this is was like 100 miles per hour or something, right? Yeah, that, that, they were going like 140, 150 miles an hour. And doing that, that's insane. Well, I hope it has really good airbags in there. <laughs> yeah, hopefully you never get to use them. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> this could have but, been uh, something that went really wrong really fast. That would have been a viral video, this thing flipping over. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, but they wouldn't do that if they weren't pretty confident about it. So they clearly know what they're doing. Exactly. So, just I, just look at this. Uh, just amazing to me. I think that says a lot too, because think about it. You know, this company it would be very bad for business if this went south and this thing flipped over, or whatever. I mean, because you know, I mean, how much would they have to pay off Rob not to put the video up? Because that would have been a viral video. You're gonna tell Rob he's not gonna put up a video of of this car flipping over. I yeah. mean, and that would be really, really bad. So you had to have a high level of confidence that. This is, you know, no, no big deal. We've done this a million times. The car yeah. is rock solid. Go nuts. Yeah. Now, they probably won't let Rob do that, but... <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, again, they're con they know they're engineering. They have every faith in the work that they've put together 
in creating this, and you know it shows. And I, I have to tell you, I met Kristen there as well. Very nice guy. You know, and that's the other thing too, by the way. So at Geneva, I met with a lot of really key people in the car world. I mean, I met Balbo, and I've met him a million times now. Such an incredible ambassador for the brand. I sat and did an interview with Horatio Pagani. Uh, that was unscheduled, by the way. Wow. He recognized me because we've met many a times and said, can I take five minutes of your time to just talk about you know, Pagani here at, um, at Geneva. Um, I met with Chris Goodwin from, uh, from McLaren. I had a great time with him. And in fact, I can't say much more, but you're going to see one incredible video uh, in the next month or so. I'm not going to tell you it was done at a spe very specific place that everybody will recognize, but that's all I'm going to hint at right now. But this is probably going to be my best video ever. And that's saying a lot because I love a lot of my delivery videos and the reaction videos and just the point of view. But I think personally for me, this was just an amazing um, uh, uh, event. And I met a couple of other uh, really cool people too um, uh, there as well. All very friendly. You know, um, uh, Christian uh, Koenigsegg is just a down to earth guy, and he's just this giant in the car world that's taking it by storm. Let me, let me ask you something. What do you think? is the thing, you know, everyone talks about, you know, not everyone, I hate when people say that, and it's not true. Yeah. A, a lot of people talk about Lamborghini and Ferrari. Those are the two household names. Mm -hmm. Now, when you look at companies like Koenigsegg, is that how you pronounce it? <laughs> um, yeah. um, you know, these, <coughs> I guess these are smaller companies. What do you think you're getting there you know, buying these cars versus buying the household names. Like, there's, there's, I'm sure there's going to be a difference in terms of, you know, the delivery execution, how these cars are designed. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's a clear difference. Um, and you, you can feel it. One, it's more of a family. Although I must tell you, I mean, I feel a, a close relationship to Lamborghini, and they are, in fact, like family. Because it's still a relatively small shop. I mean, they, it's a small company compared to you know, your GMs, your Volkswagens, your Audis, and even some of the other, you know, other, you know, specialty manufacturers, even Ferrari. Ferrari is, is not such a small, you know, company. I mean, if you think about what the number of cars they deliver compared to, say, Lamborghini, there's a little bit of a, a little bit more impersonality to um, an impersonal relationship that you have with Ferrari. And I can talk about it because I have both. I have both a Ferrari and a Lamborghini. And I can tell you, I feel a lot less connected, not because I am not as much of a fan, but it's just that I just don't feel as connected to Ferrari because, you know, they're such, a, they're such a big company and they don't necessarily treat you the same. Um, I think when you get these smaller companies, they're specialty companies, they um, <coughs> tend to, you know, their, their survival is dependent on those close relationships with their customers. Um, and so they have a lot more time and effort, and they tend to be owner controlled, so they can move in a direction to get you, you know, and put the technologies in the cars they want. And if they were owned by Volkswagen, I don't know if they would invest, you know, all this time and effort in a car that they're only going to sell. By the way, the one to one, they're only going to be six copies of that car. Wow. And and Rico, you asked, well, why are you only making just a couple? Well, some some people are looking for exclusivity, um, and they'll pay the four million or three plus million for that car. But Koenigsegg's other car, the Ajera R, and the ones before it are, you know, a million, a million and a half, maybe two million. Um, so there's a there's a difference between their, you know. So essentially, their Ford Festiva, and <coughs> you know their top end car. So that's why they're trying to distinguish between the two a little bit. That's why they do it. I think one one particular factor that people are missing is you know if you don't have one of these cars, Lamborghini, Ferrari, whatever it is, then to you having any of these cars at all may seem like a bigger deal than potentially the people that actually have them. So here's the idea. If you have a Lamborghini, chances are 
so do your friends. So when you look at it that way, you know, again, on the outside, it's like, it's a Lamborghini, you know, but if everybody on your, on your block has a Lamborghini too, I think that's where you find people yeah. that they want to do these kit cars and, and all these, like, create, like what we're looking at right now, this masonry, whatever, because it's like, uh. oh, it's not just a Bentador like Dr. M3. This is the masonry Carbono, Carbon, what is it, Car Carbonado. Car Help me out, Rico. Yeah. Carbonado. So, yeah. Rico, you saw? Did you see the video on this Carbonado? Uh, Carbonado. Yeah, yeah. I saw. I think that car is all over the place. Um, what do you and, think? And that's, yeah, I think it was the the peeling to it. I, I again, I'll go back to the same thing. Um, you know, tune up the engine, mess around with the engine, the horsepower. But leave the body alone. I mean, Doctor, you know the Aventador is a beautiful car. And 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 I think the car doesn't need anything on the outside. Yeah. Um, so why would you change, you know, why would you do extra colors? Why would you add more stuff to the body when it doesn't need it? Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I think, um, again, I go back to the same, you know, just, just turn up the engine. I'm looking at the seats. Actually, I didn't, I didn't get a chance to look at the inside of the car. Um, it doesn't look as bad, um, you know. But again, I go back to the same. Just turn up the engine, mess around with the engine, the uh, the system of the car, and then just leave the body alone. Um, I know there are some cars out there that they do need a little bit more uh, work on the on the body. For instance, the Ferrari California. Um, I think that car needed a lot more improvement on the body, um, you know. But I mean, looking at this car. Um, I don't know. I guess it's the taste that you have to acquire. You know, you have to look at the car. You know, maybe yeah. it, at least when you see it in person, when, when you see it in person, you have a different perspective than when you see it in a video, when you see pictures. So maybe if I was there, you know, checking out the car, touching it, see it physically, maybe I'll have a different impression of the car. Um, again, it, you know, I don't, I don't see it as, as, as an ugly car, something that I wouldn't, you know, as the other one, but. I'll go back to the same. The car is beautiful, um, you know, in its natural way. Um, yeah. You know, the carbon fiber. I mean, it looks good. It looks good, you know. And um, and I don't know. I mean, it's it's it says that I have to acquire. That's that's probably all I have to say about that car. I, yeah. I think you have to understand that they are. You know, these cars they have they're different types of customers, right? I mean, sure you're gonna have the person who was always a Lamborghini fan, a car enthusiast, and uh, you know they you know they've you know done well for themselves and they go out and they buy their dream car, the Lamborghini. But then you're also gonna have people that don't necessarily have that passion for cars that we do, but they're successful and you know they like to flaunt their success. And what a better way to flaunt your success but a fancy car? But if you're around successful people, again, if everybody's got Lamborghinis and, and you're you're the type that's looking for attention, then your Lamborghini may let's sort of, for example, you know, Beverly Hills, Rodeo Drive, you know, uh, you go driving down in, in a in a Lamborghini Aventador and you may not even get any attention because there's a Bugatti Veyron parked on the corner every day. <laughs> so, you know, you go and you get something like this now. So even it may not even necessarily appeal necessarily to your your you know your design aesthetic or whatever, but your desire for attention, it may you know, it may appeal to that because, for example, you have artists. I don't know if some people may not even realize they have artists that I don't think necessarily dress uh, the way that they necessarily want to dress, but as part of a business thing, they they, they have a look that kind of stands out. Like whenever you see them, you know, oh, that's such and such, whatever. So, I I think some of that plays into it, where someone may actually be. Um, Really looking for attention, and they're they're in an environment where just simply having a Lamborghini is not enough to get attention because everybody else has got one too. So you you roll up and it's like okay, another Aventador, another uh, 360 Medina. That's what back in the day it was. Everybody had 360 Medinas. Now I guess it's going to be 458s. But then you get these cars, and these are the cars you go to the show, and people are like, oh man, look at that masonry, whatever. And if that's what you want, then you know, money well spent, <laughs> right? Yeah, well, you know, I, I, I kind of agree with um, Rico on, the, on this one, and I, I totally hear what you're saying to Carlisle, but I think, you know, from a, you know, from a purist standpoint, um, and I, I see this all the time, because and what, what frustrates me the most is the pure, unimaginative nature of these aftermarket companies when they create these 
additions or these kits for these cars. For instance, on the Aventador, um, instead of using what Lamborghini gave them, they already gave them a hint of, of a wing that would work on the Aventador, which was on the Aventador J. What they instead did was they took the wing off of the Super Veloce and plopped it onto the back of an Aventador. Well, if you look at it, it looks hideous. They all look terrible because it doesn't follow the lines of the car. The car is angular, it's got ch these shapes, and the SV wing is big and massive and beautiful. It works well on the Super Veloce, but it doesn't fit the Aventador. And then the worst part is the first kits that came out didn't disable the rear spoiler, so not only did you have this huge, gigantic wing that didn't look right, it also, and I'm talking about, say, for instance, the DMC kit, but the rear wing would lift, so functionally speaking, it actually decreased the performance of the car. It turned into this huge air brake. So whereas the original wing gave the car downforce and kept the car stable, this actually upset the car and slowed it down. So wh why are you doing it? And so, you know, I just, I leave the design to the Italians, and there's some tastefully done uh, aftermarket kits, which I think are great. But I think part of the, I think what you're hearing from Rico and I is this kind of revulsion that these aftermarket guys tend to really sort of go out over the top. And, uh, and yeah, so maybe it's an image thing for that person who needs to stand out because they need to stand out with their kit from all the other Aventadors or all the other 458s around. And I understand it, but I look at this car, and I saw this car in person, and I looked at it, every piece of it, and I'm like, I, there is no way. I would not buy that car. The carbon fiber is pretty sweet on it, but right. its execution uh, and the interior, Mansouri cars, I don't like them because they just tend to go over the top and ruin the car, at least in my view in general, the way they are usually executed. Right. Well, while we're talking about topics of this nature, um, I, I thought it would be interesting to mention that the Lamborghini, was it Countach? I was yes. weird. Um, that wing, if I'm not mistaken, was never functional. The, wing the, on the, the original wing, if you, if you look at the original design, um, the original design didn't have a wing. Uh, but as they went through with the, each version um, and they upped the horsepower, actually the wing became functional, became more functional. But the original, if you look at the P400, if you look at the very first Kuntash, there wasn't a wing. Yeah, because uh, according to what I'm reading, the, the wing on that car is not needed and it was purely cosmetic, which is interesting that Lamborghini themselves you know, did that. They added a non-functional wing to one of their cars, which is the kind of thing that we're talking about, you know, third-party companies doing, but yeah. Lamborghini themselves did it. And yeah. I guess, as um, I guess, I, I think people people wanted the car to have a wing. The look the look sold, and Lamborghini essentially sells cars. That's that's their goal, is to, to you know, sell cars. So yeah. if people want a wing on the car, even <laughs> though it's, uh, you know, it hurts the performance, because apparently the wing was giving drag to the car, you know, hey, <laughs> That's what the customers want, and give them what they want. Give them what they want, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, but, but you, but you also have to keep in mind that if a customer wants that, it, it defeats the purpose of the car. I mean, why would you, you know, like you have some other, for instance, uh, I've seen rappers who have, you know, 22, 24 inch, you know, rims on their Murcielagos, and you're like, well, why would you want to do that with your car? Your car doesn't need that. It actually, it, it makes the car. You know, do the opposite than what it was made for. But, but um, yeah, so yeah, you but also have to educate customers as well. Like you can't just because you know you have a customer who's paying three hundred thousand dollars, four hundred thousand dollars, and wants an extra wink on the car. Sure, you you know you at the end, I guess you know for for a business standpoint, you're gonna be like, all right, fine, I'll put a wing on the car. But you have to keep in mind that what you're doing, it's it doesn't make any sense for the purpose of the car. So I think I think also customers have to be educated on the history of the car and the point of the car. Yeah, but I think I think I think there's a disconnect between 
what you think <coughs> the intention of the car is versus the intention of the car of the of the customer. Because like you mentioned rap artists, I mean, most of these guys, I mean, it's an image thing, right? They, they could care less about the performance of the car and all this kind of stuff. It's about me rapping about, hey, I got a Bugatti, I got a Bugatti. You know what I mean? That, that's, that's what it's all about. So putting rims and all that stuff, it totally makes sense because the whole point of the car is to, is to for flash, you know, to get attention. To it's a status symbol. So you know, hurting the performance is irrelevant. These cars never even get to be driven. Now you have somebody like Dr. M3. He really drives his car. So for him to do this kind of craziness, that doesn't make any sense. But for a lot of the people, unfortunately, that buy these cars, you know, like people talk about garage queens and stuff. You know what I mean? Like, what difference does it make wing or no wing if it's not even being driven? Yeah. Right, it's all about the looks you get, and oh wow, you have a P1, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So, speaking of which, the P1 is—I've never really been uh, necessarily a McLaren fan, but all of a sudden, I mean, Shmi, Shmi kind of got me on this tangent, and then <laughs> I saw the Chris Harris P1 video, and I have to say, man, I, I feel like I'm—I'm I'm, uh, sorry, Lamborghini, but <laughs> this car really gets me excited. Look at the car, man. Look at the back of that thing. It's just so amazing. What do yeah. you think about the P1? <laughs> Rico, what do you think? I'll tell you what I think in a second. I, I, I think the P1 definitely, definitely got the attention of everybody. Um, <laughs> I think McLaren, when they released the F1, it was a beautiful car, uh, made a lot of history. Then, you know, McLaren came up with the uh, SLR McLaren with Mercedes. The car was okay. Then they came up with the, uh, the, one, the MC12. And from from the reviews of the car, I never driven a car. I never had that car, obviously, um, you know. And I never got a chance. I think I've only seen one here in Chicago. And uh, and from what I understand, the car was like really not as aggressive as the history that McLaren has. Um, so McLaren was a little shaky right there. And then they came out and they slapped everyone on the face with the P1. And the P1 has it all. I mean. The car has the looks, the heart, the car has the, the power, the car has everything that McLaren was meant for. So I think, you know, definitely the P1, um, I've been watching the car, I've been watching a lot of videos, a lot of pictures. Um, I actually have a, a picture of the, of the P1 in my computer at work. So it is, it, it is an amazing car, man. It is an amazing car. And I have to say, I'm not a big fan of the wing. I don't like that back wing. But when you see it in action, it looks amazing. Yeah, I, I will. I again, I um, I can't say too much, but um, I, I will say that. Um, let me put it this way: I loved the car at the Geneva Motor Show. Uh, we got uh, an opportunity to do something with it uh, that is pretty unique. And uh, I, like I said, within a month or so, you will you will you'll see some stuff. I think you know people uh, who underestimate. First of all, let me back up and say the 12C is you know if you look at it, and people say it was the fax machine, and it is to some extent if you look at it from some perspective. But the car, there's no denying the performance of that car. That car beats. It clearly punches out of its weight class. No question about it. That car is very capable and it's engineered, much like the Koenigsegg, right? Um, and then you look at the new car, the 650S, which really is, you know, the 12C with some cosmetic changes um, and there's a few other things. There's some performance changes as well. A better suspension, more tuned suspension, partially informed by the uh, P1, and that car I think is going to be awesome. Um, and then we have the P1, which, frankly, at its price point, is another car that's going to out-punch or out, um, uh, out-class, um, you know, the likes of, and I'm, I'm really serious about this, the LaFerrari, it, I think, has performance that's far better than the 918 uh, Spider by Porsche. Um, and I think of the hypercars, you know, we never wanted to talk about hybrids. You remember a few years ago, it's a hybrid sports car, electric sports cars, no way in hell. Well, they've arrived, and they're insane. And the P1, I think for years to come, because of its shape and design, and I again, I, I learned uh, so much more, and I'm going to hopefully bring that to you um, uh, in, a, in a ridiculous video 
in the next uh, within the next month or so. But um, but yeah, uh, the the P one insane. That's all I'm going to say. One word, insane. Absolutely bonkers. Yeah, I I have to say, I mean, on the surface, having not actually driven the car, I mean, the first thing I obviously see is how the design looks, and it hurts me to say this, but I think that the design, you know, kind of is a better connection with my uh, taste because, like, why do I like Lamborghini? Because I I have that kind of a uh, first of all, there's there's the aviation background. I love aviation, so you know, I got that kind of sitting in a cockpit look. Well. This looks like a much more modern, futuristic cockpit if I'm into that type of thing. And also, I'm into sci-fi. You know, Lamborghinis tend to be a little bit more futuristic, uh, ultra-modern. This seems a little more sci-fi than the, than the Lamborghini does. Now, this is all kind of uh, silly stuff because we're just talking about how the car looks and, and things like that. But even beyond that, I mean, I've, I've, I've looked at the reviews and... Uh, it looks like it's got the technology to, to go with it as well. So it's not that it just looks crazy and it's all futuristic. It handles that like that as well. And one of the things that piqued my interest is the combination of this electric motor um, where I guess it, they're saying it fills in the gaps. So wherever there would be like uh, a lag, there is no lag. And it's, it's just kind of an instant. I mean, I already experienced, if you guys saw my video, I experienced the electric motorcycles. Yeah. So, so I got a yeah. taste for that infinite torque and if, if a little motorcycle you know I was uh, wow that was such a blast I can't imagine a car of this caliber with that kind of horsepower that's gonna utilize that kind of a uh, uh, electric motor technology plus you know it's, it's, it's a hybrid it's not just purely electric so it's just it, it just blows my mind when I, when I think about what it must be like to actually drive a car like this and, and, and have that kind of instant throttle response and again, it's 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 tapping back into my interest. Like I like something really aggressive, and if they're saying this thing is like an instant throttle response, like you hit that throttle and it's like boom, you know, I'm just I'm getting wow. Yeah. Let me just calm down for a second. <laughs> yeah. I, I yeah. Agree. I it's, agree. it's it's awesome. I can't wait to see the car in 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 person, and I can't wait to see what kind of surprises Doctor M3 has for us, which he's not going to tell us about, but. Sure, build up the build up the suspense. <laughs> you know, um, I, I will I will tell you this: you none of you will be disappointed. Um, um, not when you when you discover where it was done, when you discover the people involved, um, um, you're going to be like, oh my god, yeah. So I will be very I will be very upset if you do it in Chicago. You didn't tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> That's, I, I will be the first person to not like that video. Uh, <laughs> I think you'd probably hunt me down too as well. Yeah. No, absolutely, man. No, we can't wait. I can't. I can't wait to see what you got yeah, in store, this, man. This will be good. What about this? Uh, this Honda Type R, which was on my channel anyway, the hit. Everyone's you know so cool, whatever. That's what everyone was uh, talking well, what about. What was the whole big? Yeah. What was the big deal with that car? I mean, I didn't. I didn't see much about it. I mean, it's just the well, Honda well, Type. Let me tell you about that car. Dude, Carlisle did a video on it, and I saw it too and commented. This this car, first of all, the hot hot the hot hatches. You know, you know, we talk about supercars and maybe hypercars. And again, you see on my channel. In fact, I have a second channel called Ignition Tube that really is all about tuner cars and so on. But I will tell you this: that the hot hatches in these smaller cars, sports cars, um, is all the rave. I mean, there's a lot of activity in this this market space. And this and Honda has sort of sort of fallen behind to some extent to things like the Golf R, you know, uh, and a, and a few of the other. I wouldn't say the BRZ. The BRZ is a great car, um, but it's it doesn't punch in that same weight class, obviously because of its power ratio. It's a great handling car from you know all the stuff that I've read and and heard about it. But if you look at um, what this car is about. First of all, here's a small two-liter turbo car that's producing over 300 horsepower that really is, ra some, to some extent, rally-inspired. I love the part that, that really caught me on this car is the rear. That rear spoiler with the tail lights that literally come up on it. And I'm going to post a video in the next, um, uh, in the next couple of days that has 
um, the rally version of that car, which nobody, I'm surprised, that was it was on the same stand, it was just behind it, at a lower wing, that nobody is reported on at Geneva, and it was right there. But this car is, you know, a, an affordable hot hatch, um, although it's a four-door sedan, really, um, with, with amazing horsepower. This car, I think, if they bring this to the U.S., and I was told that they were going to bring it to the U.S., um, and if they and then, then what you see is the production car essentially. Then if that's the case, if Honda does that, they'll be back in the game with you know competing with you know some of uh, the WRX and all these other cars that are in this category. The Fo the Ford Focus ST, um, those kinds of cars. In fact, this car will have more horsepower than the Focus ST, um, supposedly. So that's the big deal of what this car is. I mean, it's, it's Honda's. You know, legendary reliability now with performance in a package that looks just unbelievable. In some ways, futuristic. Yeah, I think I think you you pretty much captured it. I mean, I I I like what I see. I mean, I think the d design looks really awesome. I know some people think the wing is too big. This is a different type of car. You know what I mean? Like you put a wing like that on a uh, Lamborghini. That's another story. But this type of car, I think it all works. So. That's visually, but like you said, there's, it's also the performance. <laughs> and you have to also consider, I mean, this car, they tested on, on uh, Nürburgring, right? How do you, yep, how do you pronounce it? Did. Nürburgring? Yep. Uh, Nürburgring, whatever. Yep. <laughs> whatever, you know what I'm talking about. Nürburgring, yeah. Nürburgring, yeah. <laughs> so, so, I mean, this is the real deal, man. I mean, they, 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 they really flogged this thing on the, on the racetrack. So think about this as a, a really awesome car to have um, at a cheap price point compared to, I mean, I know it's not going to be that cheap, but it's going to be much cheaper than, you know, say, uh, obviously any exotic car or anything like that. So it's, it's, it's cheap to, 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 to get this car, cheap to maintain this car because, I mean, I'm expecting Honda reliability, and I'm, a, I'm pretty much expecting this to have some really awesome handling. So, I mean, I don't know. I, for me, I think this would be an awesome toy to have to, to drive on the weekends, go, you know, just have some really great fun. Take track it, you know what I mean? And again, cheaply, man. You know, yeah. maybe modified some more. I mean, whatever. And it oh, looks yeah. great. I'm, yeah, I'm a, all for it. As a turbocharged car, you know, you know that the instant they release this, there are going to be people working on upping the horsepower from, you know, 300. God knows where they're going to go. So this car, first of all, I think we're out of the box. For you know, when was the last time you heard a Honda? Um, you know. Proving one of their cars, one of their production cars, road going cars, at the Nurburgring. I can tell it was the last time. You know, the NX, NSX probably had uh, some stuff there. Again, you know, Acura being the sister brand to uh, Honda, but when was the last Honda you saw that was proven at the Nurburgring? Eh, can't tell. And All right, we should we should probably move along pretty soon. I'm I'm gonna be running out of juice here, battery power. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're 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 running over time here at this point. Um, so I just wanted to make a quick mention. It looks like we lost Rico. He, I don't oh, know did where. we? Oh yeah, it looks like we did. He uh, had some reception issues. I just want to make a quick mention that I think in the exotic car world, I think that. The Corvette C7, and not that I'm calling it an exotic car, but in if you if you're looking for that type of car, I think the Corvette C7 is kind of in a way a higher level of what that <coughs> Honda offers because here you have something that's again a lot cheaper to attain. It's got that supercar look that you would get at a much higher price point, and apparently technology technology is there as well. So yeah. I. I that that excites me. I know people think, oh, he's just into exotic cars and all this high end stuff. But the to, the fact to to get this kind of technology, this kind of look at that price point, that excites me as well. Because I think that's a pretty pretty cool deal. Yeah, I, I agree. I think I do like the new C C7 Corvette. I like the Z06 version of it better. Uh, but I will say this, you know, and and Chevy is unabashed about this. They basically agreed that they stole um, the front end from. Uh, the, from a Ferrari, and the rear end really, in, it, it, it really does look like a Camaro. I can't help it. I mean, I, every time I look at the rear end, I see Camaro, and I know that's like an abomination to even, 
say that uh, to vet owners even, but um, that's really what it is. That's what it looks like. I will tell you this, that I give Chevy a lot of credit because not only did they update the design of the car and make it more modern, futuristic, and even a Eurofighter, um, uh, but also, I think Rico may, may be back, um, that's, which is good, but also um, the chassis, its foundation has changed. What they, what they didn't do with the Viper is that very same thing. You know, the Vipers aren't selling as well, well as they probably should because even though the car looks great and I think is far more stunning even than the C7 Corvette, I think the fact that they kept the old chassis from the old car is what Viper owners are really upset at. And, you know, because the car doesn't perform, it doesn't have the handling it should for the modern car. It's not competing and you know hopefully they go ahead and do something pretty soon and you know before they do a full refresh on the car and change the chassis because it's not it, it just doesn't compete in the current world. I mean when you have a C7 Corvette that's up there running with a Viper in terms of its handling that's yeah, not so good you know for a Viper owner who spends that extra money to kind of get you know the ultimate American, really the the, the super the American supercar equivalent, um, to 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 be competing with a uh, uh, more mass produced um, you know Corvette is is not particularly gratifying. Well, I I want to wrap things up with the final car that we're going to talk about, and then after that, I just want uh, uh, votes on what your favorite car for the show was. But the final car, obviously, I, I I've got to talk about the Huracan. Oh yes, the Huracan. <laughs> we can't leave the Huracan out. The little kind of a uh, Sesto Elemento uh, made a little bit more uh, uh, realistic because the Sesto Elemento was a little bit radical. And why I mentioned Sesto Elemento, obviously, if you look at the the back of it, and also being the V10 platform, I mean, you know, it, you know, obviously, you see the connection there. I mean, the Sesto Elemento was kind of a uh, show off of their or materials technology V10 platform, and yeah. then we have this car. I see the connection there. So, what, what did you what do you think about the car? Seeing it, seeing it. I mean, you saw it already in New York. Now you saw it at the show again. Yeah, so it looks like, uh, uh, is that Rico that just logged back in? No, that is Ray. MP, oh, Ray. Another, another, uh, um, MP. Hello, oh, buddy. <laughs> how you doing, that's the three. Hey, how are you, guy? So did you, did you hear Carlisle's I'm, I'm, I'm subscribing to the since, um, 2010. Oh, awesome, thank you. Now, thank you. And I have a, a good question, that's on three. When we're going to have some reaction video, bro? Yeah. Even my wife asked me for that. <laughs> His uh, wife is well, asking. Uh, you know, I will tell you this. Tell you this. They will come. We have, we have, we have a, the, the, I've only had the car out maybe for four or five hours since I got it, and that was that very first day. And we have a small reaction video. I will tell you, we'll have lots of this year just driving around. That's what happens. You know, it's not like we're pumping up the crowd or anything. It's just what we're doing is recording what we typically see. So they're going to be coming pretty soon. We have one that probably will be out in the first, in the next week or two. We'll see how quickly we can put that together. Um, and again, I got to bring up. I got to give a, I gotta give a shout out. Video to now. Yeah. Yeah, I love the reaction videos. I got to give a shout out to my buddy Alex, uh, who is um, who is uh, is from uh, overseas, who is uh, who's a huge fan and uh, is working on some of the stuff with me as well. So we'll hopefully get those out pretty soon, and uh, you'll you'll see the first one. And the driving season about to start, so they're gonna come hard. So uh, Ray, what do you think about the uh, about the Huracan? Huracan. Yeah. <laughs> About the new Huracan. <laughs> Call that you crazy, bro. <laughs> the new Huracan is an amazing car, but the um, the tail lights look like a, um, an Audi RS7. That's the only thing I don't like, but then it's amazing. Uh huh. Yeah, I mean, I will. It's I, a I, very I, amazing. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, I spent a lot of time. This is this is what this that obviously Lamborghini stand. I spent a lot of time. I have a very detailed video um, that I recorded on the car, including the red car that was not on the floor downstairs, but was upstairs in the VIP section. Uh, it was a red. It's called. It's a Rosa Mars car. Really sweet looking car. I I, I tell you this, and I, I said it this earlier, Ray, that you, you have to see the car in person to to. To appreciate it. I would be the first to admit that when you looked, when I looked at the back of the car, especially the diffuser, that's just lower half of the car, I was just not feeling it. I'm like, ah, did they mess it up? And then you see the car in person in 3D, and you go, holy crap, that's nice. And especially if you think about what's to, to come, you know, like that whole diffuser in the back will be carbon fiber at some point. Um, when you look at it that way. And you look at the car in in its totality. There's no question that this is a this is a winner. It's been six weeks since they've released this car. Seven weeks since they've released this car, uh, and only really this week that it was officially released. They've taken a thousand orders, not just you know I'm interested. They've taken deposits, a thousand deposits on this car, and nobody has driven it yet. Not even the dealers have driven it yet. This car is going to be awesome. And again, I'll put some stuff together trying to give folks a sense as to you know, all the details on what makes this car special and a worthy successor to the Gallardo. And my favorite Gallardo, honestly, is the Super Trofeo Stradale. And this car has to be good to be its replacement. Well, since I have... Hey, uh, <laughs> Question that uh, um sorry that you know interrupt you Dev. Uh, what's the price of the the new Huracan? The price? The the MSRP they haven't officially released it, but I can tell you what it is. The the MSRP is going to be around two hundred thirty five thousand. That's the start, and of course cheap. you can you can go from there. But I will tell you this: it's still cheaper than the four five eight, uh, and obviously way cheaper than the Speciale. Um, so you know they're going for you know one economics, although it's, it's kind of hard to say that you know two hundred thirty-five thousand dollar <laughs> car is economically uh, advisable. But you know what I mean. For those people who can afford it, it's actually you know not three hundred fifty thousand. Um, so they're 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 lining themselves up to compete well against Ferrari. They're going to compete very very well against um, the McLaren. 650, which is as which is price point is they haven't released that officially yet, but is a little bit higher than than the Uracan. and uh, so we got we'll got to see. I mean, so far, like I said, you know, they've got a thousand orders. They took them it took them ten years to deliver 1,400 cars. They like the Aventador still has a 14 month waiting list, so they're gonna, there's going to be a waiting list for this car. I just wanted to. I just wanted to say, since I have two BMW fans on on the call here, yeah. did yeah. you happen to notice that Lamborghini essentially stuck an M mode in this car? Yes, they did. Right. I mean, essentially, that's what it is, because you can customize the settings, your throttle, suspension, whatever, and with the push of a button. I'm like, that's M mode. <laughs> <laughs> that is, and it's interesting, by the way. You know, they they're not dumb. You know, they're still a naturally aspirant. Now, Ferrari is obviously going back down the turbo route, and we'll see if Lamborghini, you know, may uh, we'll see how long they can hold out in the naturally aspirated engine. I'm an NA kind of guy, although I love my, my F10 M5, which is just ridiculous. But the, just like Ferrari has had the Manatino, which you can, you know, change the throttle response and suspension and just handling of the car, Lamborghini now has a new name for their little setup button that's on the steering wheel, and it's called the Anime, which in Italian means soul, the anima. Anima, yeah. Anima. <laughs> so um, it's kind of funny. Maybe it's a little bit of a gimmick, but it's actually kind of nice. So that's a little nugget from the car that most people, you'll see the stuff on the steering wheel now and won't know the normal name. The name for it is, you know, you'll say, oh, it's a... The drive selector, no, 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 no. It has actually an, an actual name. So, and it's cool that they chose the name, that the Italian word that means soul. So it's pretty cool. My only, my only concern, oh, we're talking about soul in the car, is um, 
I'm not so happy about the introduction introduction of the double clutch. That that's something that concerns me. And I mentioned I, I noticed in the the trailer or whatever they they talked about uh, comfort and performance or something like that. Yeah. And it's like yeah. I, I, I you know when you talk about comfort to me that you're getting away from the soul which I love of Lamborghini and I. I don't like the way the 458 shifts. I mean, you, you 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 hit the paddle and it's instant. You're in the next gear. You don't feel anything. You don't hear anything. There's no drama, and that's exactly yeah. what I love about Lamborghini. So, is this thing going to be shifting like a 458? That's my concern here. No, I will tell you this. It won't be. And so, from the briefing that we had at the unveiling, and I didn't put this in the video I released because we obviously signed a, a non-disclosure. But now that the car is out, I can say this. One of the things they did with the DCT, and they realized that's why you have a, you know, you have the independent shifting rod in the Aventador, and they didn't do a double clutch at the time, is because the, that feeling, that kicking the back of yes. the head. Yes. Right? So on this car with the dual clutch, you know, there's some people that still want to roll around town in comfort mode like a Cadillac, and so, and there are times you may need to do that. So they give you that mode. But what they do with the dual clutch is they're going to allow the clutch to kind of slip a little bit, essentially, and that's going to give you the snap in the back of the head. Oh, yes. And so that feeling, that emotion of that Lamborghini won't go away. I've been assured of it. Again, once I get my hands on it, I'll tell you if it's there. But I agree with you. The, the, the 458 is silky smooth, and because of it, you kind of lose something. Well, I've always said, uh, and, and we'll wrap up on this point just just to get the votes on the cars. But um, I've always said that Ferraris are best appreciated on the racetrack. That's that's always been my my feeling. I think they're they're great cars, but they they really belong on the racetrack because they don't have the drama that Lamborghini has. I mean, you can have fun in a Lamborghini, you know, just starting it up, you know, just driving down the driveway because all that aggression and the sound of the engine. But you don't get all that drama. And I will say in the normal Ferraris, because, I mean, you, you look at cars like the 599 GTO, the yeah. Enzo, uh, yeah. the 16M. I think these cars oh. are going to be a little bit more dramatic. But um, I, I, I'm happy that you're telling me that they have not taken away that uh, drama, because that's the core of Lamborghini. That's almost like when Lotus try to compete with Ferrari and Lamborghini, those cars that we're never going to see, right? They talked about three, four years ago, they're going to come up with all these new cars, you know, bigger cars, more performance. But that's not why we love Lotus. Lotus was all about lightweight, so you can't go away from that. Lamborghini, to me, is all about that, uh, that emotion, that anima, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. So, what, what's your favorite car for the show? Have a, uh, Hello. Yeah, we're we're wrapping Carlyle. up here. We're wrapping up here on uh, votes for the favorite car for the show, for the Geneva show. Right, were you going to say something? Call I. Hello? Yes, uh, I, I just want to say something to you guys. Hello? Yes, yeah, I, I want to say something to you guys. If you have to go right now between the Pagani Wida and the McLaren P1, which one is you guys' choice? Oh, the P1 for oh, sure for man. me. You're, oh, man. Oh, Ray, you're bad. <laughs> you, are, you are so bad. How about <laughs> I'm going to give you a, 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 a non answer answer? How about this? <laughs> I'm gonna. How about if I tell you I'll I'll take them both because I oh. love them both. <laughs> I think it's that day. Oh man! Yeah, for for me, if I if for me coming down to it, um, having driven the Wira and uh, can't say much more on the other on the P1. Um, I I am still I I like the Wira a lot, but it's just by a hair over. The uh, over the McLaren, to be honest. So so Carlisle, <laughs> the pick of the pick of the Geneva Motor Show for me. If I had to choose truly just one car out of all of them, and I would say based on its significance, not just the styling and everything else, but just on its significance and its overall implication for the car car industry, I think it would be the Koenigsegg 1-1. And the reason why I say that is we, we've already been in this horsepower war for a while now. But people are making more horsepower without weight necessarily weight reduction and balancing the car. 
I think this car is going to set a new benchmark. In a close second, I would say it's the Lamborghini Huracan. Because, again, I believe it's groundbreaking uh, in its technology and what it's going to do. I think it has that potential. I think we're going to have to drive it to see, um, to see for sure. And uh, after that, um, you know, I think there are a whole bunch of other cars that are, are, are there. So that would be my top two choices. Ray, what do you say? <laughs> Dad, you know, like, I was trying to make some reaction video with my uh, BMW M5, but the GoPro camera I will suck, and nobody paid no mind. <laughs> <laughs> but, but what car, what was your favorite car from the show? Well, for the, for the show, the wider, the Pagani wider was amazing. Yeah. The yeah. yellow Pagani wider? Oh, Lord Jesus, man. Oh, yeah. I say... I, I, I sent you guys a, a, a video. Okay. Nice. The Pagani White it was really, really amazing. Oh, Lord Jesus, man. <laughs> uh, Carlisle, what are your picks? Um, what are, you, are you asking Carlisle picks for my picks? <laughs> uh, exactly. I, I, trust me, that was deliberate. <laughs> um, I, I would have to say... And it, it's tough for me to say this, and I think you guys already know what I'm going to say, but that, that damn P1, man, <laughs> that yeah. car is just, well, I just can't get over that car. I, I got to see that car. But, um, so, yeah, the, 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 the P1 for sure. Um, beyond that, I mean, there, there were a lot of cars, so it's, it's really hard to pick ones, but yeah. I, I really think that um, that, and I guess the, uh, the Pagani as well. Yeah. The Pagani as well. I have to say, I, I you know, I, I'm still a Lamborghini fan, but you know, the Huracan, I'm, I'm not. I, I need convincing. You know what I mean? It uh, on its presentation and what I've seen so far, I, I'm not, I'm not convinced. I'm sure it's going to be an awesome car, but, uh, you know, these the P1's also an awesome car as well, right? And the the the, uh, the Pagani's awesome as well. I, I still need some convincing on on what the, that car really is going to be all about. I will tell you the. The latest generation of Gallardos, I was very impressed with because I used to think of Lamborghinis as toys, um, not really serious cars. I mean, lots of fun and exciting, but not really serious cars. You know, the, like the the Musialgo, you know, it's so big, so wide. Um, but when I was on the racetrack in one of the latest generations of the Gallardo, man, oh man, and I was being thrown against that door with, with the G-forces, I was just like, this thing is a real serious track weapon. This is yeah. not a toy. This is the real deal. So with that in mind, if that's how they exited the uh, the Gallardo um, saga, then I can't imagine what this car is like. But again, I I'm just not convinced based on what I've seen, what I've heard. i got to drive the car and I'll let you guys know what I think. But yeah, those are my picks. Excellent. Well, hey, thanks for bringing us together. I think this was really awesome. We probably should try to do these again. Maybe we can uh, line it up and get uh, Shmi on, and we can talk about there are a bunch of other things coming up as well. Maybe we talk about you know some major car events that are coming up this year, sort of a preview and, and stuff like that, and you know, let's see how it goes. Would you like to close with letting us know anything uh, in particular that you want to let us know in terms of what's coming up on your channel? Anything that you want to let us know at this yes. point? Yes. Yeah. So on the channel, actually today, um, I'm going to be releasing a video on the Ad Personum program from Lamborghini. This is making your Lamborghini your Lamborghini. You can basically configure it anyway, and they've expanded that program in a way that I think is, is well overdue. Uh, I'm going to have a video and an interview with Horatio Pagani. We're going to look at the, the, the Wira for you, Ray. So that will probably be out tomorrow. Um, I am going to be traveling. I'm going to Asia. So uh, I'm going to try to pump out a couple of these and maybe I'll get tweets and stuff up from uh, Central Asia uh, a as well. We have um, some reaction video. I actually have uh, tomorrow is probably going to be the first drive of the um, point of view video from my new anniversary of Ventador. So that's going to be up tomorrow uh, uh, sometime, I hope. Uh, and uh, like I said, I mean, there's just so many more things happening this year. 
We uh, may participate in a part of Gold Rush. We're going to be a part of Italian Stampede. We're doing Eurosport DC as some of the rallies. Um, uh, we're going to be getting together the Quad Ventador. You remember those four Aventadors that got together uh, last year? We had tried to storm New York City and got you know stymied by traffic. Well, this year we're going to probably have anywhere from nine to a dozen of these cars, some anniversary, some not. Um, and we are going to take New York by storm, and I guarantee you we'll have a reaction video to go along. So some really cool stuff coming up this year. We're really excited. Uh, thank you guys for all your support. And I think, you know, we do this for you. Carlisle has his channel and does a lot of great work as well. You know, check out subscribe, subscribe. It's the thing that really motivates us to keep doing what we're doing and comment. I mean, we interact with you, so we want to hear your comments as well. Um, uh, so definitely do that, and, uh, you know, um, we'll, we'll bring you lots more stuff this year. Outstanding. And thank you for taking the time to speak with us, and enjoy your Sunday. Great. Take care, guys. Carlos Pick signing off.